Who do you have, Vish? So that brings us here, right? And I, I kind of went back and forth with this. You know, it, the Rod, I don't want to be the guy that says Rodgers, Mahomes, or Allen, just because those are so popular. But I'm just going to go with Patrick Mahomes. I, I think Patrick Mahomes is going to have maybe the best season of his career this year. I think the fact that they revamped their offensive line, I love Orlando Brown as a left tackle. I think he's heavily underrated. I think he's a phenomenal football player. Joe Tooney has been very, very good for years, and I think Joe Tooney is going to be excellent for the Chiefs. And then Creed Humphrey, I mean, you and I did a mock draft where we had Creed Humphrey going 24th. So yeah. we thought very highly of Creed Humphrey, and for them to draft him where they drafted him, and it seems like he's had a solid camp for them. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's. I think their offensive line, like the notion that it's not as good because of what happened at the end of last year, they've quietly just – turned it from just the second unit people. in the NFL to a top 15 unit. And we saw what Mahomes could do with a top 20 unit last year when Eric Fisher was healthy. He was prolific. And then you go in, Tyree Kill is obviously, in my opinion, the best receiver. I think your opinion as well, the best receiver Probably, in the yeah. NFL. Travis Kelsey's a top two tight end. Andy Reid's going to be cooking it up. And I think the big thing for me with uh, – the Chiefs is that, and I, I think Clyde Edwards Hilaire is going to have a really, really good season. And I think adding the running back element to their pass game and adding a run game is only going to benefit Mahomes. I, and obviously, we've seen very few bad games in Mahomes' career to begin with so far over the last three years. I don't expect to see much more. I mean, he was right in the thick of the MVP conversation last year if it wasn't for a historic season. From Rodgers, he was, what, 38 touchdowns, six interceptions, almost 5,000 yards. I think with the 17 games, Mahomes will be back in the 50 touchdown, 5,000 yards uh, in there again. And I think he might even break records if he's a, if he's able to play all 17 games. I hate to be the person that says Patrick Mahomes, but Patrick Mahomes to me is going to be the 2021 NFL MVP. Yeah, interesting. I think the point of the O-line is probably just – the most glossed over thing that's kind of happened to any of these playoff teams, I think overall, like you think of any, you, you could look at all the other play or teams that went deep in the playoffs and you look at any of their just overhauls of units. And the chiefs line is the one that comes to my mind. First you mentioned Orlando Brown, Tooney Humphrey, they're getting the right guard back who went to go be a doctor. Yeah. Um, uh, Duvernay yeah. Tardif. Yes. And somebody mentioned he's injured in the comment section. I think he's out four weeks. He will be back for the majority of the season. So, yeah. So, I mean, you just look at that and just the fact that like what you, when you look at what he did also in the playoffs last year, like they were running through teams. They destroyed the Bills defense. Like that was just clockwork. And then the Browns, they were really, really good with Mahomes up until the point he got injured. Like their offense was moving the ball. Well, they controlled the game. It, it kind of seemed was going towards a blowout almost. Um, you could argue when he was in there, and then yeah, when he got injured, Chad Henney didn't play necessarily great, and the uh, the Browns just kind of started running the ball down their throat and limiting possessions. But um, yeah, obviously the Super Bowl wasn't ideal, but uh, yeah, I guess when Mike Rummers is going against Shaq Barrett and JPP, and you have a bunch of backups, that that's what's going to happen at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Even then, I mean, there were some of the just the most debatably best throws I've ever seen. Like he was horizontal to the ground and he threw it some odd yards, and it just hit his guy in the helmet. Like what? What about the first insane. throw on the on the corner route that he he absolutely laid on a rope? Uh, after rolling to his left to uh, yeah, in to, the back uh, um, Tyree Kill. Uh, it was about a 40-yard throw, and Tyree Kill dropped it at the very beginning of that game. Yeah. There were a lot of ridiculous throws in that game that were dropped. And there were so many throws that if those catches were made, I wonder how the game would have gone. And real quick, I wanted to touch on uh, my dark horse because I have two dark horses and I think sure. both of these guys are going to have high efficiency and excellent seasons and I think they might be in this conversation if their teams are as good as I think they will be and that's Tom Brady and Baker Mayfield yeah. both guys I think have teams that are capable of being the two best teams in the NFL to me Brady's uh, Bucks could go 17 and 0 like looking at their roster they have zero weaknesses looking at their um uh, schedule. They have a fairly easy schedule for a team that just won the Super Bowl. They are capable of going 17-0. and 0. So 
to me, from that standpoint, you look at the fact that Brady was, what, 42 touchdowns, 15 interceptions. If he's 44, if he's 42 touchdowns, 12 interceptions, 5,000 yards around there again, and they, uh, they um in, they go what uh sixteen and one or like fifteen, 15 and, two. and two or just yeah, yeah I would yeah, barely lose, right? the fact that Brady is doing that at forty five or forty four he would be in the conversation and then uh Baker Mayfield I, I I think a similar type ordeal if the Browns can reach their potential of how good they can be I mean we saw how efficient and how well Baker played at the end of last year if he continues at that high efficiency and he has a four thousand yard you know high efficiency season with like 30 mm-hmm. plus touchdowns and less than 10 interceptions he he could be right in the thick of this conversation as well yeah I think the only issue with Baker is that they're leaning so heavily on the run game that just like it's hard for the stats to be there like I could see with like Brady at least like they're gonna chuck the ball a lot they have the best receiving core in the league I, I don't think that's really up for debate like Antonio Brown is I mean, he's still probably – he might even be their best receiver, but he's number three on the depth chart. That's all you really need to say, and I, I could totally see that. Yeah, my only issue with Baker is just, like, the the, st- the stats are probably going to be run up more so by Chubb and Hunt than just him killing teams. But, I mean, you have a point there. Like, they definitely do have debatably the best roster, probably at minimum top three, and they're going to have just a really, really high uh, – a really, really good record at high win count. So. Seeing with all that put together, yeah, I mean, you have to – it's pretty much – it boils down to the quarterback on a top three team is going to be up there um, is kind of how it works. And then somebody mentioned Herbert in the comment section. He could be right there too. I just don't expect the Chargers to be as good as these other teams. So I, I think yeah. it's difficult to win MVP unless you have a team right in the thick of the Super Bowl conversation. Um. And the other thing I wanted to mention, yeah, I mean, actually, it's not another thing, but the bottom line is, yeah, I think Patrick Mahomes is going to win his second NFL MVP next year. You believe Josh Allen and our dark horses are Matt Stafford, Brady. Obviously, we didn't even mention Rodgers. He's not really a dark horse. He's a favorite. It could be him. And, of course, Baker Mayfield. 